Hey everyone, welcome to the Felicity Yarn Studio channel. My name is Zoe and I am here with a new finished object video for you guys. This is the Sea Glass Tea. It is the latest design by the design duo of Wool and Pine. Um, if you've been here before, then you'll know I have done a few test knits for those ladies in the past and um, I had to jump on board to do this beautiful, beautiful sweater. The pattern is out today. That is May 27th of 2021. So I just wanted to make this video real quick and kind of break down what this pattern is all about, how I approached a few things, show you guys how it fits on me, um, provide any kind of information that I can to help you if you are interested in knitting this pattern. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, if you can see, this is an all over one by one color work pattern and you change both uh, pieces of yarn on every round. So that's how you're getting this effect here of colors kind of um, melting and playing off of each other and shifting. It's a very scrappy, stash busting type design. I'm a big, big fan of those types of designs. I love scrappy, stash busting projects. So I knit the size, it's either the size six or size seven, I don't remember, but it's the one that is the 55 inch bust. Um, I have a 50 inch bust, so I was going for the recommended five inches of positive ease since this is a t-shirt style design. I'm very, very happy with the fit overall. I got that recommended ease. I did get gauge um, as recommended by the pattern, and that was with using size four needles for the ribbing and size five for the body. As far as yarn goes, I used approximately 385 grams of yarn for this. I just stuck it on my scale when I was done and weighed that. And then um, I just kind of guesstimated based off of the yarn base that I used the most in this to approximate my yardage, and I think that was somewhere around 1,540 yards, um, maybe a little bit more since you're trimming a lot of ends in this, but I mean, not by much, maybe a yard or two. Anyway, as I mentioned, I did get gauge on my swatch. However, when I was actually knitting this, when I was making the last increase for the yoke here before you separate for the sleeves, I did go ahead and try this on and I found that the yoke was hitting right where um, it was recommended to at the widest part of your bust. And so I decided to go ahead and separate the, for the sleeves immediately after the last round of increases. I didn't work the recommended um, even rounds after that because again, I was already measuring at the recommended length and it was hitting me exactly where it was supposed to. Um, so that's why it's a good idea to always try on your knits as you go. That's why I'm a big fan of top-down knits, especially they're just so easy to try on and make sure that they're fitting correctly. So that's really the biggest modification I feel like that I made to as far as the shape of the pattern goes. Um, the only other things that I really changed as far as what's written in the pattern is for the sleeves, um, I actually just went on ahead and straight up put on my ribbing for my cuff here instead of knitting the two inches that were recommended. Um, again, I was pretty happy with where this was hitting regardless. I didn't really feel like I needed extra length there. Um, I did do a slightly longer cuff than what was recommended and I did that on the hem as well. I think it was something like six rows of rib were re recommended. I did about eight rows of rib on my sleeves and the bottom hem, just for the sheer fact that for me in the past, six inches of ribbing isn't quite enough to keep things from flipping up. Now I did a steam block on this. I've not like wet blocked it completely, but I'm really happy with how it is fitting with the steam block. So like any other color work pattern, um, blocking really brings color work to life. And even though this is just simple all over one by one, and it's not really like a pattern or a graphic that you're trying to make with your knitting, um, it's still just made everything lay flat and kind of bloom and really look cohesive with that just gentle steam blocking. And I also found that where my where my 
collar up here was flipping up a little bit and the hem on the bottom was trying to flip up still some with that gentle steam block I did not have any problems um, as far as that goes once I did that steam block now if you're sitting here and you're like man that sounds like a lot of ends to weave in and a lot of yarn management to handle if it's you're changing both colors on every round the pattern utilizes the magic knot um, to join these colors so that there's no ends to weave in when you're done and it's a seamless transition the knots are down the back of the sweater um, on the yoke part and then it's under one of these sleeves here um, for the beginning of the round on the body. I've talked about on my last podcast when this was one of my works in progress how I'm not a huge fan of the Magic Knot. Um, it's not always super secure for me and I don't know if that's just the way that I'm tying the knot or what. Um, a lot of the yarn that I was using was MCN so I feel like that was a little bit slippery. Um, so I did have a couple of knots pop for me and one of the other test knitters recommended using Fray Block or Fray Check. It's a uh, like a fabric glue that you can put on the ends of yarn or threads or whatever on garments to keep those ends from fraying. And if you dab it on your magic knot, it will keep them from you know coming undone. So I did that for the yoke, for the um, magic knots that I did on the yoke of mine. And when I got to the body, I actually switched to using the Russian join. I've talked about how the Russian join is generally my preferred join method. It also has the added benefit that you don't have any ends to weave in when you're done. Um, it does require a little bit of cleanup and I need to kind of go through and trim some ends and put a little bit of that fray check on a couple spots where the Russian join is on mine. And aside from the fray check, fray block, um, glue or whatever that stuff is. There's one other tool that I think is really useful for this project and I don't know why I was sleeping on this for so long. I forgot to bring mine up here. I'll put it on the screen. Um, that is a knitting thimble and that's that little like looks like a spring that you put on your finger. It helps guide two pieces of yarn um, on your finger if you're a continental knitter. I'm not sure how it works if you are a English knitter. I'm not sure how it works if you hold the yarn in your right hand but if you hold it in your left hand you slide that thing on your finger and it guides the two pieces of yarn and it makes doing color work fly by so like I said I've knit a lot of color work and I was always the hold one piece in each hand camp the knitting thimble was a game changer for me but once I got to the body part since this was a test knit and I was on kind of a little bit of a deadline I figured out approximately how much yarn each row was taking so I just went ahead and I made a magic cake so as I was making the magic cake I would join two colors at a time and then I just wound them up in the ball together I didn't have any tangling problems. I didn't make a huge cake or anything. I kind of did three or four cakes to get through the body of the sweater. Um, and there was some of it where I still did it as written and changed them row by row. But I do feel like the Russian join is a little bit slower than the Magic Knot. I will, I will give the Magic Knot credit there. It's a little bit faster of a join. However, I was much happier with the Russian join on this. Um, I don't know if it's just what I'm more comfortable with or what. Let me know what your favorite join methods are down in the comment box down below. I'm always looking for, you know, new techniques and new ways to up my knitting game. And if you're looking for some more information on the Russian join, you've not heard of it before, I've got a video and I'll leave a link in the description box down below um, as well as try to put it on the screen here for you. So as far as my yarn choices for this, I mentioned it is, you know, a scrappy kind of um, stash busting design. I decided to start off with the advent calendar that I dyed up last year. So out of the 24 minis that I dyed up, I decided to use about 18 of them and I used the full size skein that came with that kit um, for you know the cuff and the hems and um, I also used it throughout randomly. I know that some of the testers um, you know once they got a certain length in started repeating the color combinations that they did 
I really just went completely random all over so that I could have that really beautiful kind of random splotchy thrown together look <laughs> um, but yeah this was a full size skein that I started with so once I had kind of those minis pulled out I did go through my stash I pulled out a few full size skeins to kind of complement that and I pulled a few other things from some other scrappy projects that I have going on um, just to kind of round out the colors a little bit and bring in a few more colors that I really thought um, you know could spice this thing up a little bit more so this was my main contrast color um, this is a skein of lichen and lace um, I'm not sure what the colorway is apologies I actually picked this up when I was down at the beach right when this test knit started um, so I, I knew I wanted a little bit more peach in this um, this was from my stash this is from fun right round I'm sorry I don't remember the colorway names and I don't know where the labels are but I can mostly remember the dyers. <laughs> um, this is a skein from Spectrum Fibers. Most of it is bits that I have dyed up, but then yeah, basically everything else in this project bag is all minis and or scraps and leftovers. So yeah, like I said, I just kind of would randomly pick out colors. So I did repeat the full size skeins um, more frequently than I did the little minis or leftover bits. I would keep the full size ones aside and then, so as I used the minis, I was kind of putting them aside in a separate pile. And once I got through most of them or I stopped making color combinations that I really liked, um, I kind of threw them all in the back in the bag or started working you know back on putting them all in one place so it wasn't like I was um, repeating colors super close to each other I think it it has the perfect kind of random effect going on in this so let's talk styling um, this again is a t-shirt style design so it has a rather long body I think the body length is written for 14 inches um, I did not even go that long on mine I did about 13 inches once the hem and everything was on there so I could have made it a little bit longer but I kind of like where it is hitting me kind of like mid hip um, it looks super cute with shorts I haven't tried it on with jeans yet because it is 90 degrees here it's like the first really hot week here in the south or at least where I am and uh, I was kind of dying outside <laughs> taking pictures in this earlier um, but I think it looks really really cute with shorts and I can't wait to try it on with a pair of jeans I did try it on with a like high-waisted skirt that I have and since it's so long um, I felt like I could tuck it in and then kind of you know pull it out a little bit to get that little bit of a poof <laughs> happening I don't know what you would call that um, but yeah it looks really cute either with the skirt or with shorts so yes I love this it is super versatile as always the ladies of wool and pine they have made a really well written pattern the instructions are very clear they have a lot of helpful hints and um, some really great video tutorials and some really great information on color choice and color theory. You know, if you're not comfortable just throwing a bunch of yarns together and seeing what you get, um, I really suggest, you know, watching those videos that come along with the pattern if this is something that you're interested in knitting. Um, the other thing that I will say as far as color choice goes, a few years ago I was lucky enough to be at Black Mountain Yarn Shop when Stephen West visited and he said something that's always kind of stuck with me since then since he's kind of the king of you know mashing up all kinds of colors and making chaos look good <laughs> um, but he said you know if you're working on something and you throw a color in and you don't like it just keep knitting just keep adding more colors the more that you add the less that your eye is going to stray to a color that you don't like and he said he never frogs a project or like goes back when there's a color in there that he doesn't like so thinking about it that way was a really new way of thinking about it for me at least um, I don't always follow that principle but I you know it's kind of something that's stuck in my mind especially when I'm doing scrappy things or things with a lot of color um, you know it's not gonna stand out and you know completely ruin a project like this I feel like if it's something where there's like four colors in it yeah I would change the color that you don't like 
when you've got like 40 colors going on like I do here, I think you're okay to leave that one color that, you know, just didn't do it for you. All right, guys, I think that just about does it. I have given you all of my information. Um, if I've forgotten anything, I'll be sure to include it in the next podcast episode, which should be up in the next week or so. Just depends on how much making I get done in the meantime. Um, but yes, let me know down below what you guys think of this design. Are you planning on making a sea glass tea? Um, what are your favorite kind of summery knits? One other thing that I wanted to note is that I will be doing my 500 subscriber giveaway on that next podcast episode in another week or so. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, all of that good stuff. I really, really appreciate it. And I will be back with another video soon. Bye.